Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Do I look tired? Because it is a little past two o'clock in the morning and I've been up since about six in the morning. That's a little over 20 hours by my, uh, by my calculations, but look at this. Things have changed. There's a little more latitude and longitude different different things but you know what i'm saying things look different around here uh change up the camera angle change the camera lens i am rolling with a 16 millimeter lens i had been shooting my tutorials on like a 19 20 millimeter it was with an 18 millimeter to 35 millimeter lens but it was around 20 millimeters so widen things up new desk new lighting setup, some fun stuff like that that I've been playing with. Um, and today we're going to be talking about, after that little spiel, uh, but I figured I, I got I to gotta say something about it, right? Um, we're going to be talking about uh, some hidden, uh, sort of a hidden tip and trick in Photoshop to creating LUTs or color lookup tables, as those of you who do a lot of video editing may know them by. Uh, they're super duper useful, but not only are they good for video editing, they're amazing for photo editing as well, because with one simple adjustment layer, you can apply like a ton of different adjustment layers, uh, even a combination of adjustment layers that you've sort of saved and set aside. So I'm going to show you how to do all that. Uh, today's video is brought to us by a sponsor, and that is Infinite Color Panel. Uh, my good friends over at Infinite Color Panel, Pratik, one of the best, one of the best retouchers there is out there today. He does amazing work, um, and he is a part of a, a little group of folks that have created this really great color grading panel. We're going to be playing with it in Photoshop today. I'm also going to be showing you how to create your own custom from scratch uh, color looks, and I will show you how to take them out of Photoshop and bring them over into what well, we're going to be using Premiere today, uh, but pretty much any color grading NLE, any non-linear editor, any video editor, Get rid of the fancy words. Any video editor uh, will be able to take the LUT over into any video editor and apply it to footage and have a real, real great time with it. Uh, check out the link down in the description. Use the code TUTVIV for $35 off the infinite color panel. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap this thing up. Let's we'll wrap up the intro. We'll get into the tutorial. All right, let's get started right here. We're going to begin with sort of the video application of this. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to be generating LUTs from Photoshop, and a LUT is a LUT is a LUT. Whether you use it for a, a video clip or a still image, it's the same LUT file. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do all of it. But we're going to work with a piece of video first, uh, just because video is cool. Uh, so I've got this video here. I'm going to double click it. It's going to open it up in my QuickTime player and I can scrub through it just, you know, like any old video, pick a frame and then it's like right here. This will be my reference frame for color grading, if you will. And we can just go edit copy and then jump back over to Photoshop and say file uh, new, not open, new. And Photoshop, one of the options it's going to give you is a document that's the size of whatever's copied to your clipboard. We're going to say, yeah, give me that one, then create, and then choose edit, paste. And you will see, voila, there we go. We've pasted that image right into place. Now, another way you could do this, if you have a really complex video file and you're working in Premiere or wherever, you can go into your timeline and say, I really want this frame, and then hit this little icon right here, export frame, note the hotkey, shift plus the letter E, and you can choose to save out a JPEG and just bring that guy into Photoshop as well. But here we go with this. I am going to first go layer and just flatten my image down, right? You want to make sure you have a background layer right there, lo locked background layer. Uh, and then here comes the star of the show. Like I said, it's a sponsored video by our friends over at Infinite Color Panel. And here is the Infinite Color Panel. So we're going to play with this first. I'm going to show you how to make some of this stuff from scratch too, in case you have no interest in Infinite. Uh, but Infinite Color, it's awesome. Uh, so you got the big create button and that does all the magic. You can choose whether you want a light, medium or intense effect. I think I'm going to go intense. Uh, you can choose to harmonize. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that even though I just did. It does something that we really don't need for our uh, color lookup table. I just instinctively hit the button because I'm, I don't know. I'm What's the, what's the word for that? I forget. Restless, impulsive. Impulsive is what I'm looking for. Uh, anyway, we've got all of these different adjustment layers that we can add. We can click on any of them to say, look, give me a color grade effect with only curves, selective color, and a color lookup uh, adjustment layer. I'm going to turn everything on uh, because, hey, we're going to make this nice and complex and, and uh, complicated, just like we shouldn't. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and hit the create button and see what we get. So the first one, it's kind of green. It's kind of heavy. Not really what I'm looking for. Uh, and you can see we've got this info 
infinite color folder and five adjustment layers added. They are all these adjustment layers that are listed here in the panel. I don't, I don't really like this. I want to try something else. No need to even delete anything. You don't need to reselect anything. Just hit the create button again and it'll move things around. Now, this is kind of cool, maybe a little bit red. So knowing that I may end up going down to like color balance here, double click on color balance and say, yeah, in the shadows, we want to tone back some of the reds, I think. Something kind of like that, maybe tone back a little bit of the magenta as well. Just boost a little green into there, just kind of like that. And if we shut off infinite colors before and there is after. So I, I'm going to close the infinite color panel now. There's a lot you can do with it. Uh, you, you could say like, hey, we, we hate the gradient map. Uh, randomize just the gradient map. Do we get something different? We do get something different. Let's try randomizing again and again. And maybe I want to go back so I can just go edit undo or toggle last state and I can just shift back to exactly the look that I had originally liked. So anyway, now that we have that we can we now that we have a look that we like, I should say, I'm going to close the infinite color panel and I'm going to shut off my background image and we're going to go file well, I'm going to make sure I select all my adjustment layers here. I don't know if it's even necessary to select the, all the adjustment layers. I just kind of do it by habit. And I'm going to go file, export. And here's the star of the show. Have you ever noticed this right here? Color lookup tables. Look at that. Let's go ahead and hit that. And you get this little nifty export dialog box where you can give your LUT a little description. And we'll just call this test underscore 01 or something boring. And uh, the grid points, 64 should be plenty for you. And I, I generally, I don't know, you can go with 3DL and cube. That's obviously the, def the default here that's checked. If you have a specific use uh, or a specific need or your, your video editor only takes one type of file format, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm probably actually just going to export the 3DL because 3DL or cube, I use both in, in Premiere. Uh, but in this case, we only need one. So I'm going to go 3DL and I've already spent way too much time talking about the formats. I'm going to hit OK. Okay, and I'm going to choose to save this here into a desktop folder, and I'm going to call this LUT underscore 01, and you can see it's just dot LUT. We're going to go ahead and save that sucker, and that's it. Let's jump over to Premiere, and at this point, we're ready to grade this footage. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy, of course. You go Window, and we would say open that Lumetri color panel, and we're going to go into the basic correction, and here we have our import LUT. And we can go import, we're gonna choose browse. And here's the folder. I've got my video that's being used in the project, but also LUT underscore 01.3DL. And let's hit open and give it a second to work. And there you go, it's applied just like that to your footage. So no need to mess around with your white balance, all your tone settings in here, creative and shadow and highlight tints and getting involved with curves and the color channels and HSL secondary and all the color wheels and everything and trying to match things. Just create a LUT in Photoshop, export it, apply it to your footage, boom, you're done. It's that easy. So it's a really, really easy and effective way, especially if you feel like you're more proficient with Photoshop, a really easy and effective way to create LUTs. And using something like the Infinite Color Panel is just an incredibly fast and easy way to get yourself started uh, creating LUTs that are going to work really nicely for your footage. It gives you a great starting point, and you can go in and adjust and tweak your adjustment layers all you like to get the, the look that suits your footage, your film, the mood of the shot just perfectly. I'm going to close infinite color. All right. Uh, I can actually close this whole PSD. Let's move along to uh, how this can be used for your still photography as well. Of course, you could just go extensions, infinite color, and I could start messing around with different looks right here from infinite color until I get something I really like. Uh, but I want to show you how to create custom LUTs. Let's say you don't want infinite color and you want to create LUTs. It's a little bit more labor intensive. You got to have a little bit more vision per se, uh, but it's definitely something that's doable just might not come out as professional right out of, right right off the bat uh, as it would with something like infinite color so with uh, with a shot like this uh, these are these wonderful long-haired scottish cows bulls whatever you call them i'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer here and i think i may boost the yellows because yeah i believe the cow is going to be in the yellow department and i'm going to darken up the blues and the cyans because back there i don't know if you noticed before we applied the uh, the, the black and white layer we just have a lot of blue and cyan color back there and a lot of like yellow orange in the cow. So I kind of know those are the colors that are going to be boosted and adjusted. And then I'm going to set this adjustment layer to the overlay blend mode. Now I know what you're thinking. Overlay, that's crazy. It's so strong. And it is. But we have this nifty slider here called opacity. And we're going to just 
Crank this guy back. Just find the sweet spot. Yeah, somewhere there between 20 and 40. There we go. That looks pretty nice. And looking at it, I'm still thinking like the blue back there is too strong. So I think I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And what I may do here is grab the little scrubby tool and just say, yeah, that target the blues and just desaturate them a bit. Just desaturate them until it looks good, something like that. All right, that's great. I'm going to collapse my properties panel again to get it out of the way. And then I can go through a series of maybe we add a levels adjustment here and we boost the output a little bit just to reduce contrast and open up the blacks in the overall image a little bit more. Maybe boost the whites a little bit. Um, I, I'm intentionally trying to overcook the image a little uh, because, again, we're just going to roll back the opacity of some of these adjustment layers. There we have it, something like that. And last but not least, I don't know, we can we can have some fun with maybe a gradient map here. Uh, not black to white. Let's go with something strong. Maybe we'll go with this kind of very dark blue, very, very dark blue. You can see it's bluish, purplish, whatever. And an orange in the highlights. Hit OK. Again, super overcooked. And we're going to set it to a soft light blend mode, which is going to just really toast it in there. And then just reduce the opacity until you get something nice. So I can hold down my alter option key. There was my image before we applied our color grading. Here it is now. And looking at it, I'm kind of inspired to add a little bit more cyan around the edges. So I can do that easily with levels. I could add a color balance adjustment layer, of course, and add cyan. But let's do it here. Cyan is the opposite of red. So in the levels adjustment, go to the red channel. And let's just open up cyan in the image a little bit. So bump that over and then bump the white output slider over as well. Something kind of like that I think will be nice. We can see just, yeah, it just adds a nice kick of cyan, helps complement the entire image a bit. All right, so now that we have that, of course, we shut off the cow, and I'm going to select my adjustment layers just like that. I'm actually going to delete this group. I don't know why I left it in here. Let's delete the whole thing. Let's just select these adjustment layers, and we'll do the same game where we just go file, export, color lookup tables, voila, I guess Scotland cow, that's perfect. And I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to save my Scotland cow LUT right next to uh, the LUT 01 that I just created. I'll go ahead and save that. And now the wonderful thing about this is let's delete all these adjustment layers. Of course, we could go over to Premiere and say, you know what? Let's see what this LUT looks like applied to our footage instead. So I'll just go browse, and of course here's scotlandcow.3dl, and apply it, and you can see there's the change it makes. It's nothing crazy, nothing extreme, um, but you know, I, I kind of prefer the one that we had. But anyway, where this is more powerful is now that we've created that LUT, we can reference it with our photos later on anytime we like, just by adding a color lookup adjustment layer. So color lookup adjustment layer, and you can load a 3D LUT file. So we're going to go into here and we're just going to select load 3D LUT. We're going to ignore all the presets. Just choose load 3D LUT. Here we are in our folder. I can just choose scotlandcow.3dl, open it up, and there we go. You can see with one simple adjustment layer, I can apply that exact look to this image. So this would be great if you hit upon a series of adjustment layers that you really love overcook them. Now, I would probably go back if I was creating this again and really make this an extreme effect, like, you know, make it something like this, because what you could always do is take, let's assume this is one giant color lookup table layer. You can always just reduce that opacity and just toast your image nicely with a color grade instead of overpowering it or not having enough power. So sometimes, you know, really creating a powerful LUT and just always scaling back on the opacity. That's really the way to go. So we've got this model here in this white dress. We could do the same thing. We could try to apply that same 3D LUT to it. So we're going to load our LUT. I'm going to choose Scotland cow. And we can see there's what it looks like on her image. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, or we could do the same thing with her where we create a series of adjustments where we go ahead and boost the black point and reduce the darks and boost the highlights. Let me flatten them off a little bit. I'm going to delete this uh, color lookup table for a second. Uh, let's maybe add a color adjustment and bump some reds into here, bump some yellows into the midtones. Then we go down to the shadows. I know I'm flying through this. We're going to push some blues and cyans into the shadows. Great. Let's go to the highlights and just warm up the highlights a little bit. Something like that. Beautiful. Uh, and then maybe we go gradient map and we say, hey, gradient map, uh, let's go with that blue to yellow again, but I'm going to select the bluish color. I'm going to make it a little bit more blue purple and then the orange I'm going to make this more of like a beige something like that and I'll hit OK you can see what we've got we would set this to let's say soft light reduce the opacity of that and we can see there's before, there's after. Maybe there's a little bit too much contrast, right? So what I would do to just kill some of that off is just add a levels adjustment, 
and just change the output sliders here. We're going for more of a stylized look. I know, you know, this is not going to be the application you want for everything. This is more of that trendy, faded, you know, Instagrammy fade look. Maybe drag it beneath one of the adjustment layers just to help temper it a little bit. And of course, reduce opacity as well. And then we can just shut off the background layer. This is how fast it can be. Select those adjustment layers. Bam, file, export, color lookup tables. You get it at this point, right? Beautifulstylishgirl.jpg. Let's just call it Beautiful Stylish Girl and hit OK. And here we are in our folder. And I'm going to hit save. And we've got our 3D LUT. And of course, we could go back and say, you know what? What does this one look like if we apply it to the cow? So let's go load. And let's say Beautiful Stylish Girl. And there we go. We've got beautiful stylish girl now applied to our long haired shaggy Scottish cow. Maybe I'll double or triple that effect up and you can really see we really cook the effect into there. It's a bit extreme, but I think you get the point. So creating LUTs, really simple to do in Photoshop, really fun, and it's super easy to export them from Photoshop, drop them into Premiere. Um, and it's great when you just export a reference frame, grade it up in Photoshop. Again, I can't emphasize it enough. It's especially useful if you're just more comfortable with the adjustment layers and the color editing and grading tools that you have at your power in Photoshop. Ah, and there you have it, the infinite color panel in Photoshop um, and really doing all kinds of stuff with adjustment layers and just learning how to create our own LUTs in Photoshop. You can see we, we had a lot of fun with it made a lot of different stuff, and then applied some stuff to video over in Premiere as well. So this is a great technique that works for still images and your video. So it's a really, really great way to go and leaves you with a ton of options. If you uh, prefer using Photoshop and you do some video editing on the side, it's a really fantastic way to figure out how to get some great color grading for your videos as well. So... That's really going to be it for this one, guys, uh, for covering some adjustment layers and how to export color lookup tables. We like to call them LUTs from Photoshop. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsInTopVid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.